I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The 121st Psalm. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh even from the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, and he that keepeth thee will not sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself is thy keeper. The Lord is thy defense upon thy right hand, so that the sun shall not burn thee by day, neither the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Yea, it is even he that shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The congregation will please be seated. Here beginneth the 14th verse of the 8th chapter of St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God, 
We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear also the words of our Lord, as we find them in the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John beginning at the first verse. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let us comfort one another with these wonderful words. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of the soul of thy servant departed, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of thy saints, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of those who depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful, after they are delivered from the burden of the flesh, are in joy and felicity, we give thee hearty thanks for the good examples of all those thy servants, who, having finished their course in faith, do now rest from their labors. And we beseech thee that we, with all those who are departed in the true faith of thy holy name, may have our perfect consummation and bliss, both in body and soul, in thy eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ, 
our Lord, before Thee, O Heavenly Father, we remember now Thy servant, Herbert Clark Hoover, who has passed from our midst into the fuller light of Thine eternal presence. We thank Thee for all the goodness and courage which have passed from the life of this Thy servant into the life of others and have left the world richer for his presence. We thank thee for a life's tasks faithfully and honorably discharged, for his service and devotion to his country beyond the call of duty, for his understanding and concern for the needs of all mankind, for good humor and gracious affection, and kindly generosity, for sadness and pain endured without surrender, and weakness endured without defeat. May we have the assurance of his continued fellowship in thee, and realize that there is no separation between those who love this we ask in the name of him who is the resurrection and the life, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Remember thy servant Herbert, O Lord, according to the favor which thou bearest unto thy people, and grant that increasing in knowledge and love of thee, he may go from strength to strength, in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we remember before thee all those who this day are in sorrow, especially these thy servants who mourn. Comfort them with the sense of thy presence. Help them to trust their loved one into thy keeping, believing that around and about him are the arms of thy everlasting love. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, now, O Lord, support us all the days of this troublesome life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in thy great mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Under God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. And with this blessing, the Reverend Terence J. Finley, Rector of St. Bartholomew's Church, ends the burial service for Herbert Clark Hoover, 31st President of the United States. And the distinguished audience now will leave the church slowly. President and Mrs. Johnson.